to this, uh, this project. A ton of private uh, contributions that is just uh, overwhelming. You know, the state of Iowa and, the, and then, you know, the university supporting it as well. So we're really, really fortunate. To, it's an absolutely incredible facility. And as we went through the planning and design of it, we went we visited a lot of places. We visited about 12 different, 12 different um, facilities, both college and pro. And our idea was, hey, let's go find out what other people have. Let's go find out what they have that's the best, you know, whether it be, you know, team meeting rooms, locker room equipment, strength conditioning. So we want to go out and, and really do our due diligence. This is really an incredible opportunity to build a facility from scratch. So in order to do that, we wanted to do our homework, so to speak. The function and flow of this facility was critical to us. All right, the neighborhood that we're in right now, okay, you look at the, the way it's been designed, it's been designed with a purpose. All right, we're adjacent to sports medicine, so we have we have you know immediate proximity to sports med. The locker room is right here, equipment, all right and strength conditioning in the field. That's kind of our neighborhood. In the old facility, it was very fragmented, okay? Our sports med was on a different level, equipment, locker room, different level. Um, you know, so if we wanted to, say, start a workout in, on, on the field, warm up, go in and lift weights, come back out on the field and condition, we were walking across a parking lot twice, um, and that could happen at 5.30 or 6.30 in the morning in February. So we're literally, our guys are literally walking in and drying their shoes off. And, we don't have that here. This this uh, function and flow of this room is awesome. As you come into the room, you know, we typically start in the indoor. We come into the room, the, some of the highlights, there's 32 power stations. Each power station has a Tendo unit on it, which allows us to measure bar speed. For years as strength conditioning coaches, we prescribed sets and reps, okay, volume and intensity. With the, with the computer units that allow us to measure bar speed, rate of force development, it gives us a third dimension to program design. All right, so it allows us to bridge the gap between weight room strength and on-field power. Sport's a game of speed, okay? And the, the quicker you can exact your will and, and, and put your will on opponent, you can take him over. So that allows us, okay, to prescribe our training sessions, you know, in, in the, in the, with the concept of bar speed as well as we consider our, you know, prescribing programs. The other thing you'll see, if you look down this row, you'll see Kaiser functional trainers built into the racks, okay? In the field of strength conditioning, so a couple of industry standards. Powerlift for out of Jefferson, Iowa is a really strong company, all right, and they've really moved to the forefront in strength and conditioning equipment. And then Kaiser has really moved to the forefront in functional trainers and ground-based power development. This is the first project that we know of that we were able to combine those two companies. So it would be like combining Pepsi and Coke on a project. So that wasn't easy, um, but both of them saw it as beneficial to contribute to this project. So we're really, our players are the benefit uh, beneficiary of that where we are not we do not have an allegiance to any one particular company we have an allegiance to our athletes we have an allegiance to Iowa football in the state of Iowa we're going to bring in the equipment that allows us to best do the job all right so we're able to combine two companies there as you wrap around the, the, the field turf on the far side the 77 yard turf area that butts right up to a reinforced wall that is really important for us because it allows us to contrast power training with strength training. We were not able to do that in the old facility. It was too small, we didn't have that access to a field turf area. So we can combine plyometric jump training with our strength training. We can also combine throws and throwing medicine balls off a reinforced wall. So we can do upper body explosive training combined with our strength training. That is really beneficial to us. And that was part of the idea of the program design. As you wrap around down the far corner, there's a large storage unit to probably fit about six cars in there. And we can actually push now, if you came into this room on a Monday, for example, in the off season or in the summer, and you, and you walked out of here and said, hey, I saw Iowa football, this is how they train. You came in on Tuesday, you might see a completely different stage room. That storage area allows us to stage the room for what our objectives are that day. You see a lot of empty space here. If you came in here on a particular day, you would see equipment out on the floor set, set up, staged for the objectives for that day. Also, right down the middle aisle, you might see plyo boxes, you might see kettlebells, sandbags, different equipment that's staged for that day. So we can get it on and off the floor very quickly because we have the storage unit for it. As you wrap around, there's an NFL locker room down the corner, which was important for us. We get a lot of NFL traffic. There was a workout this past February. We had 19 NFL guys in here. During the NFL lockout a few years back, we had 24 NFL players training in Iowa City. And that locker room allows those guys to have a home, have a place to put their stuff. 
Uh, it tells you three things. You know, one, people don't typically return to some place where they did, where they had a bad experience. So if we have guys coming back here, you know, we're hoping you know, they had a good experience here. They're returning. The stability of the program. When you look at, you know, Kirk Ferentz, Hayden Fry, even you know, we've had two football coaches since 1978. That kind of stability is remarkable in in the current climate of college football. When people come in the building and have played here, they're they're running into coaches, sports medicine staff, administrators that were here when they were here. All right, so that's a positive. And then the third thing is we hope that um, that they see this as beneficial to their job security. If they come in and they train right and they go back to camp ready, then they're going to be better prepared by by being part of our program. So February, March, middle April, we have some NFL traffic, and then they typically return mid June to third week of July. They're back training here as well and it benefits our players if they're walking through the facility and there's Kirksey and Hitch um, you know and then there's Yonda you know Tobin and these guys I mean that's really you can't you can't put a price on that I mean that is so valuable to our program so you continue to wrap around you see there's quite a bit of meeting space and, and office space that we we never had before the uh, the meeting space is critical to us you know as we see how we operate player development is critical in order to do that our players have individual meetings about four in the open in, during the winter semester. Okay, so they'll meet with the head football coach, they'll meet with an assistant football coach, they'll meet with myself, and they'll meet with an assistant strength conditioning coach. It's important that we're covering things such as their functional needs, any injury history or any any injury, you know, corrective exercise that we're doing to help prevent and fix injuries that they may have had. We're talking about, um, you know, about weight gain schedules, goals, performance goals, positional needs. So we have a significant amount of time that we sit down with our athletes and meet with them. The ability to connect and develop relationships with kids is really important. The last component I'm going to kind of point out is this refueling station. In the refueling station, we're really, really lucky that it kind of coincided with the deregulation of feeding athletes that happened on August 1st, 2014. So this, this refueling station is something we've never had um, before. It allows us to really feed our athletes the right nutrients at the right times. We look at bookending our day and bookending our workouts. When I say bookending the day, what I mean is it's critical you have a good nutritious breakfast. So if our guys are over here training or meeting, they can get good food in them in the morning. They can walk out of here in the evening, pat in their bag, they can throw in a shake, a bar, a piece of fruit, so they never go to bed hungry. So they're bookending their day, morning and, e morning and evening. And then they're also bookending their training. So a guy comes in here, it's not uncommon for an athlete to take in 2,000 calories during a workout. All right, they may take in four to 500 calories pre-workout, wow. four to 500 calories mid-workout, and then their post-workout could easily be 1,000 calories. All right, when you ask, hey, how do you put good, you know, put good functional weight on athletes? All right, you look at our current roster, um, there's schools out there that collect talent through recruiting, and there's schools out there that build it. And we're, we don't make any bones about it, we're a school that builds it, okay? Mm -hmm. In order to build it, we need the resources Okay, we need, the, we need the facilities, the resources, as well as the refueling to build it. You know, when you look at um, our three offensive tackles right now that are competing for a time, there are three guys that have combined added 225 pounds of body weight. Okay, you look at Butker, who was a 215 pound quarterback as a sophomore at, at, um, up at Cedar Falls when we first started recruiting him and offered him. He was a 215 pound kid. You look at the other two are walk ons. You know, Cole Cross was 225 pounds when he walked on, our, on this campus as a freshman. You know, and then Boone Meyer was a 235 pound high school kid when we started to recruit him. They both walked on. But in order for that to happen, you know, we need the resources and the refueling to do it. So we're really, really lucky that we can provide that for our athletes now. So.